Thank you for joining me today on Culture Keys. Get set, get ready, let's grow. And here we go. Welcome into Culture Keys this morning. I want to warn you, I am highly caffeinated and ready to roll, and I'm encouraged to share with you. So I want to draw your attention. We've been talking about finding our puzzle. Paul spends a lot of time in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 really explaining body ministry. And I have found as a pastor, one of the most difficult things to do is to get people in position, to get them in place, um, to find their place in the body and get them fully functioning, to get them to stand in their gap. And I want to remind you, every person has a puzzle their piece completes. God has called you, He has gifted you, He has anointed you, even if you do not feel like that is the case. I want to encourage you that you have a place in the body, you have a gap to fill, you have a puzzle to complete, and it's so important, especially in this season, to get connected, to get rooted, and to get your gift in the gap it was designed for. This morning, I want to draw your attention especially to verses 4 through 6 of 1 Corinthians 12. And I want you to hear these words because we're going to talk about the gifts and the different kinds of gifts here over the next couple of weeks. And I hope this turns a light on uh, for some of you concerning uh, the body of Christ and the body ministry that Paul teaches in 1 Corinthians 12. Here is verses 4 through 6. It says this, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which works all in all. So I'm going to draw some principles and some information and some revelation out of verses 4, 5, and 6. The first thing I'd like to point out is this. The Holy Spirit is the source of all gifts. The gifts may be different, but the source is the same. James chapter 1, verse 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. So the gift came from the Spirit of God. And I think it's important that when we look at our lives and when we look at the lives of others, especially those that are really gifted that we, that we look to, we have to understand that that's not them. They are not responsible for that. They didn't do that. That it is God that is the gift giver. And so we have to be careful not to despise the gift that he's given us because we can look at the gifts of others, compare our gift to theirs, and if we're not careful, we'll covet their gifts and despise our own. If, if you're listening this morning and you've had those moments where you look at what God gave you and you look at what God gave others, and you covet theirs or are jealous of theirs, but you despise yours, I, I believe this session is for you because it can seem unfair. We can operate in jealousy, but if you're not careful, jealousy will make you bitter. And what you don't know is the time, the dedication, and the sacrifice that those people have put in to perfect the gift that God has given them. Our job is not to be jealous over what God gave them or bitter over what God gave us. Our job is to maximize the gifts that we've been given, to focus on what we can do instead of what we can't. Stop seeing what you don't have. Stop seeing what you can't do. Stop focusing on what you wish you were or what you wish you could do and begin to put in the time, begin to dedicate yourselves and sacrifice to use your gifts for the glory of God. And when you do that, dedicate the time and dedicate and put in the sacrifice, then he'll multiply your impact. He'll take your gift, your, your natural, and then put his super on top of it, creating 
a supernatural release. And I want to tell you this morning that what you do with your gift is vitally important. What you do, or let me add this, what you don't do is vitally important. I'm not going to take the time to read Matthew 25, 14 through 30, but just let me tell you what the story is. It is the parable of the talents. And if you remember that there was a person given five talents, there was a person given two talents, and there was a person given one. Now, if we're not careful, uh, we feel like the guy who only got one talent, and we look at the guy who God gave five talents We see the disparity between what we have and what they have. And what it will do is it will do exactly what it did to the man God gave one talent or that uh, the householder gave one talent. If you remember the story, the guy with five put his talents to use and he made five turn into ten. The person with two talents put their talents to use and those two talents became one. But the man with a single talent, the Bible says that he buried his gift or talent and that when the householder came back to check on what what did you do with the talents I gave you, that he found that the man with a single talent was unprofitable. Whoever used their gift doubled it because when you put your gift to work, listen to me this morning, it multiplies it grows. But when you bury your gift, it makes that gift unprofitable. And God commanded that the unprofitable servant be cast into outer darkness. Can I just encourage you with everything that's in me? Use your gift. Surrender your gift. Put your gift to work and see how God begins to work for you and through you. Man, we have too many people. Uh, I I feel the spirit of the Lord in the studio this morning just for me to encourage the body to get in position. You have a puzzle. Your piece fills. You've got to fill the gap. Stand in that place. Use your gift because when you do, God is going to work for you. He's going to multiply your gift and he's going to use it to bless the life of others. And Paul refers in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6, the the scriptures we just read, to three specific classifications. He talks about gifts, administrations, and operations. He says there's diversities of gifts, differences of administrations, and diversities of operations. So I want to be clear, and uh, over the next week or so, we're going to work on this. But I want you to understand spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts are gracious endowments leading to miraculous results. A gift is a gracious endowment. When you look at that word gift in the Greek, it's the word charisma. It means a gift of divine grace or a favor that one receives without any merit of his own. A gift is a spiritual endowment that qualifies you for service. That means we didn't do anything to receive them. They do not make us any more special than anyone else. It is the gift of God. So we have to refuse to be lifted up in pride because of the gift of God. The gift's not ours. The gift is God's. I see so many people... Um, you know, I kind of walk in pride or in arrogance because of the gift of God that is upon them. And that's the surest way to lose the gift is when we be- begin to believe that we're the ones, that we did it, that, you know, and I hear this all the time, that we're self-made. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you, you're listening to a man this morning that is not self-made. Certainly, I have applied myself. Certainly, I have studied to show myself approved. Certainly, I've tried to sharpen and improve on the gifts and abilities that God has given me. But those are not my gifts. They're God-given. I feel like, you know, the story in the Bible about the lost axe head. They were chopping down trees and one of the men lost his axe head into the water and he began to cry to the prophet 
And uh, his response to the prophet was, alas, master, for it was borrowed. His fear of losing it was because it wasn't his. Too often I see people lose the anointing because they don't remember that it's borrowed. The way we treat our gifts, the way we guard our lives, the way we guard the anointing that God has given us, we have to do it like it's borrowed. We have to treat it like it's precious, and we have to use it for the glory of God. I want to talk to somebody this morning that's kind of mishandled your gift. Uh, You've just not applied yourself. You've not stood in the gap. Uh, Maybe you've uh, not remembered that God gave you that thing, big or little, Um, important to you or not important. It's God's. It's borrowed. We have to treat these gifts and abilities and callings and the way God sets us in the body, understanding that we're the clay he's forming, that we don't get a say in how we're formed, that we have to rejoice in the shape that God made us, knowing that if we stay in his hands, he can remold us in different seasons of our life. I want to encourage you, you may be standing in a gap, faithfully wondering, you know, whether God's ever going to reform or remake you. If you'll stand there faithfully, if you'll activate your gift and serve in joy for the glory of God, if you'll stay in the hands of the potter and you can only stay in his hands when you're standing in your gap,